Welcome to my channel. Hope you're well today. Hope all is good in your world. Now, one of the comments that I get a lot whenever I post content, especially from new archers, is what arrow should I buy for this shiny new bow that I just picked up? And it can be a daunting question because there are so many variables that go into choosing the right arrow for your particular bow or your particular setup. But the big one you really need to be uh, mindful of is the static spine. Now, of course, when you get into tuning and doing all the other things with arrows, that kind of goes out the window a little bit. But to match the, the arrows to your bow is critical, especially if you're first starting out. That's going to give you a better shot cycle. It's going to give you better groupings. Of course, now there's, again, a lot of variables that go into that. But we're going to tackle the basic one today, and I'm going to show you how to measure static spine. And I'm going to show you how, or not show you how, but show you why that's important. So let's dive into this video and hopefully I'll answer some questions here. And as always, post your comments below because I love the comment section. And if you've got questions that go beyond this video, I'll be, I'll be glad to help in any way that I possibly can. So how is static spine for an arrow measure? For a carbon shaft, the arrow is on two points 28 inches apart with a 1.94 pound weight hung in the center. And however far that arrow deflection is because of the weight being in the center, that is where the spine is measured or how the spine is measured. Now, I measure carbon and bamboo the same uh, because even though it's technically a wooden arrow, it's hollow in the center and it doesn't have a grain pattern in the bamboo shaft itself. So it closely mimics the carbon shaft so I can measure those the same and get an accurate reading for both. Now for a wooden arrow, the span is 26 inches with a two pound weight hung in the center. And again, that amount of deflection is what is measured to, to, for that static spine of that arrow. Now, why is the static spine important? Because you have to flex the arrow enough on release of the shot to help it get around the riser if you have that particular type of riser that doesn't have a shelf cut into it. So let me grab two bows and I'll show you what I mean by that and explain a little bit more of the static spine. And then we're going to test a few on the spine tester that I made here and see just how close these arrows actually get <laughs> to, <laughs> to what they're rated. So let me grab my bows and we'll talk a little bit more about the static spine. Okay, so you can see on this bow how far in the shelf is actually cut. This is almost a center cut shelf. And what's going to happen is when you shoot that arrow, you don't have to worry so much about the, the actual spine of the arrow to help it get around the riser because it's just going to go in a straight path anyway. So you could use a couple of different arrow spines with this particular bow just because of the way the shelf is cut. Now on another bow that I have, I'm going to show you here in a second, I'll explain why the static spine is really critical to making sure that your shot is going to is going to actually get down target to where it's supposed to be. So again, depending on how your riser's cut, that's going, to have an that's going to have an effect on how that arrow is shot, and that's also going to affect what static spine you need for that, that bow setup. Now, on my long bow here, you can see that this is a lot different. The shelf area is not cut in as deep as the recurve there, so the static spine of this arrow is going to be really critical whenever you're shooting that shot. Because this is not cut so deep, you're going to have to depend on arrow deflection to get that arrow around that riser effectively and then give it time to straighten up and correct flight on its way to the target. Now if the spine is too, is too high for this bow, meaning you got, this is a 45 pound draw weight bow, Let's say your arrows are spined at 65 pounds to 70 pounds. That's going to create a stiff arrow. And what's going to happen is it's not going to have enough deflection to get around the riser, but it's going to veer off to the left because it can't flex. And that's going to create a stiff arrow or a stiff spine shot cycle. Now, on the other hand, if the, the arrow spine is too low for this 45 pound draw weight, it's going to flex too much and it's going to continue off to the right because it can't correct itself because the flex is too great, it's going to create a weak spined shot. So static spine is important whenever you're picking these for your bow, whenever you're selecting arrows for your bow, you wanna make sure that you've got at least the correct static spine 
for that draw weight or something close to it. So what do you do if you can't tell what the spine is because it's not marked on the arrow? Let me show you how we do that. You can buy a commercial grade spine tester, which is fine, or you can build one like I've done here. This is again, I made this out of scrap wood. The only expense that I have for this is just the dial indicator here, the digital dial indicator. $23 is what you can get those for. And again, it's a good dial indicator. And then of course, these little tabs here on the ends to hold your arrows. Those are just a couple of bucks at Home Depot. Uh, all the rest is just scrap wood I had lying around from other projects. And then of course, this is what I used for the hooks. I just had to bend them a little bit. So what you want to do, these are spaced 28 inches apart, by the way. All you want to do is take and place your arrow in here. And then you want to kind of center it as best you can. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want as, about an equal length on either end of the arrow over the, the actual holders themselves. And then you want to set your dial indicator down on the arrow like so, zero it out. And then I made this 1.94 pound weight just by filling it with BBs and other pieces of little metal fragments that I had lying around. You can buy these, but again, if you can save the money and make one yourself, why not do it? So all you do is you get everything zeroed out, hang your weight, and just let it free fall down. Don't drop it. And so this spine is showing 453. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit on that. So 453, this is a 500 spined arrow, so basically, it's about a 450. So then all you do is you go up to your chart here. Let's see if I can move this. You can get this chart online. You can print it out. And you're looking for the 453. So I have a 449 and then a 457. So basically, the spine rating for this bow is a 58 to 57 pound. And that would be safe to shoot out of that particular draw weight of bow. Now there's a lot of different things that can go into that. Of course, you can uh, do some dynamic tuning to it to really affect the dynamic spine of the arrow. But to get you started and get you in the ballpark, this is what you're wanting to do. You're just wanting to get the, the static spine of that arrow and this is how you accomplish that. So let's try this with a bamboo arrow. Let me set this one to the side. Now I've tested a few of these spines so far, uh, but I haven't done all of them yet. And then I've got another shipment coming in, so I'll be wanting to test those as well. <clears throat> so the same procedure, you put the arrow, you want to get it as, as even as you can on either side. It, again, it's not critical, but you want it to be as close as possible. Then we're going to zero this out. Well zero it out, not turn it off. Zero it out, take your 1.94 pound weight, hang it in the center, let it come to rest, and then let's see what we are here. 405, so if we look at our chart, between 400 and 407, that's going to give us a spine rating of about 65 to 64 pounds on this on this particular bamboo shaft. So I can bring that in a little bit for, closer for you. So yeah, 407, 64 pounds. So that gives you the spine rating for this particular bamboo shaft. Now what you can do is take a magic marker, mark that on there. That way you know uh, what the spine rating for that is. And I'll tell you why that's important here in just a second. Now for your store-bought carbons or retailer bought, wherever you get them from, they're probably going to have the spine rating already stamped on here or you know somewhere affixed to this arrow you're going to know the spine rating so trying to match the spine or measure the spine is not so critical uh, as if you're building bamboo shafts or wooden shafts because you really need to know what those are spining at and there's a good reason for that so this one's a 64 pound uh, spine rating for this arrow and if I was building a bunch of these, which I have, I want to get my spine rating uh, between the arrows as close as possible. It doesn't mean you can affect the spine of this or change it in any way, but what you can do is group them together. Uh, let's say I have four in the bunch that are rated at 64 pounds. 
uh, for the spine, then that would tell me to keep those four together because they're going to shoot almost similar to each other as opposed to one that may be, let's say, spined at 40 pounds or 70 pounds because the spine is going to be different, so the arrow flight is going to be different as well. So keep that in mind. It's really just a great way to, to test your spines and group your arrows together for the best possible shots that you can possibly take. So again, that's just a quick and easy way to test your spine. And again, you can build one of these really inexpensively, like I was saying. The most expensive part of this was this dial, uh, $23, but you can pick those up. Now I did use a mechanical one when I first built this spine tester. Wasn't real happy with the mechanical dial indicator because it never could get back to zero even when nothing was being tested. So I went ahead and bought a digital one to replace that. And again, you can make one of these. Or if you're testing wooden arrows, you can pick up a two pound weight on Amazon. This one's about $10. Search around because these things vary in price so much. I finally found one for 10 bucks and yes, I did weigh it <laughs> to make sure that it was two pounds. So it is where I needed it to be. And if I ever build any uh, solid wooden arrow shafts, then I will be able to test those as well. I will just have to move from the 28 inch down to the 26 inch where I've already tapped out holes for that. So again, static spine, it's important when you buy your when you're buying arrows, match them to your bow as best you can. That way you don't have to worry about, you know, again, safety concerns, too weak a spine, the arrow could break. I know I've taken so many comments about yeah, 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 whatever, but honestly, that is the truth because if it flexes too much, it could actually snap that shaft in half. Too, too stiff of a spine, they're not going to shoot well out of your bow, and then you're going to have to do a lot of tuning. So that is my thoughts on static spine and why it's important. Hopefully you found something useful in this video, and hopefully it's something that will help you to, um, if you decide to build arrows, uh, will help you to kind of go down that path successfully. Uh, without all the frustration that I've experienced over the course of time. Okay, one, one last point about choosing the static spine that's right for your bow. Make sure you look at the chart for the arrow manufacturer. Um, normally they're all about the same. You don't see a lot of variation between any of the charts that I've looked at. But one thing you want to look at too, whenever choosing the static spine for your bow or your draw weight, they're going to take into consideration how long the arrow is, um, how much weight you're going to use up front, whether it's 75, 100, 125, 150, uh, field tip. That's going to go into that static spine as well, or making sure that you have selected the right spine for your bow. Uh, so keep that in mind because, again, a, bo a body at rest tends to stay at rest. So how much weight you have up front is going to is going to uh, affect how much flex is actually on that arrow shaft at the time you release it from the bow. I mean think about all the stored energy in the limbs that's going to be transferred to the string to a single point here at your arrow knock and then once that shot is released this weight is acting like a wall here and before it actually picks up movement it's going to create that stop and create that flex. So keep that in mind when you're thinking about buying arrows for the draw weight of your bow. You want to make sure what fill tip I'm going to be using and then the other factors of how long the arrow is. Now how arrows, the arrow length affects the spine, the shorter the arrow, the stiffer the spine. It's just the way it is. Um, so keep that in mind whenever you're purchasing arrows. And above all, be safe and have fun. Make sure you get the equipment that's matched and rated for what you're doing. You don't want to put yourself in an unsafe situation. And the biggest part about this is archery is a fun sport. Don't make it more frustrating than it needs to be. Keep it simple and just, you know, go with what works and then build upon that as you grow in your archery journey. So thank you all for coming by today. Hope you've enjoyed this brief video. Hope it's helped you. I hope that maybe it's given you some information that you can take and use over the course of time and maybe share with your friends. And if you've been my subscriber for a long time, thank you so much. I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. And if you're new to my content, please consider subscribing and tell your friends. Come on in and join us. We're going to have a good time and grow together. That's the point of this archery community, to grow together, have fun, and enjoy the journey. So thanks again, everybody. Hope you have a great day, a better day tomorrow, and a wonderful week ahead of you. And until next time.